Hello dear children. Now we are in chapter number uh, 11 that is called determination of equilibrium price and output under perfect competition. So I think uh, you have watched that vid uh, video of uh, chapter number 10. Uh, I didn't explain uh, much out there because there is nothing to explain in great detail about the conditions. Okay, because the topic has been reduced so much that there is nothing left to explain on in detail. Okay, you cannot ex go in depth. But in this chapter, we will be uh, discussing many things, and this uh, chapters, um, this chapter will be divided into uh, three or four lecture videos. Okay, so let us start with our discussion. As we have already uh, seen the definition of uh, firm in the previous chapter, that is uh, chapter number ten. It was quite similar to the Lipsey, okay. So as you can see out here, this employs factors of production to produce commodities that is said uh, that, that it sells to other firms, households, or the government, which means basically to others, okay. So that definition was provided by Lipsey, but this is the exact word that he used, okay. These are the exact words that, that are used by Lipsey, okay. So firm is a is an individual unit okay in the entire economy which employs the factors of production to produce different commodities and sales to other firms to households or to the government okay uh, now industry so what is industry basically according to uh, Lipsey as you can see out here that uh, industry is a group of firms that sells a well-defined product by well-defined product we mean actually the uh, homogeneous products okay or uh, uh, sorry um, uh, a very unique uh, product okay for example apple company it is producing a well-defined product isn't it iphone so which has no close substitute to it yes uh, in terms of the mobile phone there are various um, substitutes but there is no phone which just looks like iPhone. Okay. I hope what I mean, like people are crazy about this MacBook, but we are using uh, laptops, okay? And uh, there are uh, varieties of laptops are there in the market, like uh, Asus, uh, then we have this uh, Zeus, and then uh, we have, uh, what's this called? Uh, HP, Lenovo, Dell, okay? So varieties of companies are, uh, providing a laptop in the market but still people are uh, they are so much uh, concerned about this macbook okay so that's a well defined product okay or closely related set of products okay by closely related set of products we mean the close substitute okay so firms are actually the large group of firms okay so now uh, let us start the discussion about perfect competition in the short run okay remember that in this uh, microeconomic section we will not discuss about the long uh, run okay remember we will not discuss about the long run and the uh, monopoly situation or maybe the uh, you can say the imperfect situation okay we will stick to the perfect competition only that is why in the chapter number 10 uh, you must have seen this kind of uh, graph by the way this kind of graph okay where uh, mc was uh, intersecting this uh, mr curve from below okay so we will discuss this same out here which i didn't explain in chapter number 10 okay okay now so what is this by the way so perfect competition exists only when the following conditions are satisfied so these are the six basic conditions that a firm must satisfy so to have a perfect competition. So what are these conditions? Number one or number A, necessary conditions. Number B, sufficient conditions. So what are the necessary conditions? Number one, large number of buyers and sellers. There must be large number of buyers and sellers okay and there should be the uh, free entry and free exit in the market 
this uh, free entry and free exit uh, only in terms of the sellers by the way okay so it means that any new firm can enter the market and any existing firm can easily exit the market so this is called your free entry and free exit uh, i hope you have uh, heard this term ease of doing business i hope you have uh, you are familiar with this term i hope you are uh, uh, like familiar with this uh, uh, term and uh, you uh, read some news also i mean the economic news by the way so uh, they are concerned about this free uh, sorry uh, ease of doing business why they are talking about these uh, ease of doing business it's about this free entry when there is a high degree of ease of doing business it's called the free entry that a firm can easily enter that market now many firms they are saying that uh, in india the doing business is very uh, difficult okay entering the indian market is very difficult why because there are some restrictions that is put by the government okay and uh, last year uh, finance minister of india she uh, cut down the corporate taxes why why so because our indian economic you know this uh, economy is going down so to have the inflow of fdi as well as fpi okay fdi stands for foreign direct investment and fpi stands for foreign portfolio investment okay so just to uh, encourage these okay inflow of the um, foreign fund in a, uh, in our country she cut off the corporate tax so that there will be more you know there will be addition to the ease of doing business so that a firm can easily enter the market so this is called the free entry and by free exit that means that a firm can exit the market any any point of time okay easily however there will be some uh, legal uh, proceedings okay number 3 perfectly elastic supply of factors of production yes there should be a perfectly elastic supply of factors of production so that changes in a firm's output will not cause change in the price of the factors so the by elasticity of uh, supply of uh, factors of production we mean that uh, any change in the price will affect the supply of factors of production let me just give you one example uh labor okay so labor is one of the factor of production right so if uh, there is a increase in the wage rate what will happen more and more number of laborers will uh, enter into that market okay more and more uh, laborers will be interested to work okay so there will be the you know a uh, gush of people applying for that job isn't it but if there is a decrease in the wage rate what will happen the workers the existing workers they will leave the job and shift to the other company or they may uh, go to the other firm okay or they may enter the new market so this is called the perfectly elastic supply of factors of production okay now homogeneity of the product by homogeneity of the product we mean that the product are identical in nature okay that the products will be of the same shape size and the nature this is called the homogeneity of the product so if these uh, first four conditions are fulfilled it is called pure competition okay if the first four conditions are satisfied then it is said to be pure competition and uh, now the sufficient conditions point number 5 perfect knowledge on the part of the buyers of the price being charged by the different sellers and perfect ability to take advantage on any differences in price if they find any remember that uh, this differentiation of price doesn't take place in the perfect competition market okay but yeah if there is any okay if the customers they find if there's any kind of uh, uh, price differentiation they can easily shift to the other buyer so by perfect knowledge on the part of the buyers it means that the 
uh, buyers will have the perfect knowledge about the price that is being charged by the seller. Today, uh, we don't know whatever the uh, uh, this uh, uh, price that is charged by the sellers. Okay, we don't even know. For example, uh, if you visit a, a shop and they say, "Sir, the price is rupees one forty." So do we know uh, this? How you know this price has been uh, imposed as one forty? How much uh, is the prime cost? How much is the cost of goods sold? How much is the cost of production? What is the profit margin of the seller? Do we know? We don't know. Sorry. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, what is the margin of the tax? So combining all these, it becomes one forty. That is the sales price. Okay. Prime cost, cost of production, cost of goods sold, and then it will be your sale price. Sorry, including the uh, profit and the tax margin for the government. So one forty. So do we know how this one forty is becoming? No, we don't know, isn't it? So, but in a perfectly competitive market, the buyers will have a perfect knowledge about that. Okay, so this is about the perfect knowledge on part of the buyers, and perfect knowledge again on the part of the sellers about what the other sellers are doing. Okay, how they are uh, like uh, producing various types of goods. Okay, in the market. By the way, there is only one uh, type of product in the market. And uh, what type of uh, technology they are uh, using? Okay, your competitors. Okay, and uh, what mode of production they are following? Okay, how many labors they have? Okay, what type of uh, machine they are using? So everything will be known to each other, and if all these six conditions are fulfilled, then it is said to be a perfectly competitive market, or you can simply say there exists a perfect competition. Okay, so I hope you have the uh, clear idea about pure competition and perfect competition. Okay. So now let us start with the next part. That is, yeah. Uh, in connection to the perfect competition, uh, you must remember that no single firm or single consumer can influence the market supply. Remember this, because in a perfect competition, there is there is no single firm in the market. By the way, okay, there are large number of buyers. And large number of sellers. Okay, I think uh, that point was uh, explained in chapter number ten. Yeah, that point was explained in chapter number ten. Okay, so it is the continuation. Okay, Re remember that this chapter number eleven is the continuation of chapter number ten. Okay, so no single firm or single consumers can influence the market supply or market demand. Okay. And uh, remember that price is determined by the uh, collective actions of the firms through the supply curve of the industry, and on the part of the consumers, it is through the demand curve of the market. Remember, it is not the individual demand curve; it is the demand curve of the market. Okay, so through the interaction of the demand and the supply, uh, we get to know the exact equilibrium. Level of output. I think you know this. Okay, only this picture, only and only this particular picture. What is it called? What is this actually? What is this picture uh, depicting? This picture is actually depicting the equilibrium situation, or you can say this picture. I mean the diagram is for the market mechanism. Demand is equal to supply. I hope you are. Uh, Having a kind of a deja vu, by the way, just by looking at this particular uh, diagram. Okay, looking at this graph. Anyway, so after knowing these two points, let us now move forward. That uh, equilibrium of the firm uh, in short run. Uh, you must again know three more uh, sections. 
or three more uh, sorry uh, three more points by the way sorry yeah so what is the first one the firm is a price taker remember that in a short run in a com perfectly competitive market remember that we are only talking about the perfect competition okay in this chapter number 11 we will discuss about perfect competition only and only perfect competition imperfect competition is out of the syllabus i mean uh, it is not in our syllabus by the way for this particular year okay so we are talking about the perfect competition so in a perfect competition and in a short run firm is a price taker okay firm will not decide the price how the price will be decided then price will be decided through market mechanism what if uh, a point where the demand and the supply they inter, uh, intersect or they meet at a point that is the point e these by the way these figures are taken from the book only okay please refer to the book also you must uh, read the book by the way so firm is a price taker it doesn't decide the price it actually accepts the price through the interaction between the two market forces of demand and supply okay an individual faces perfectly elastic demand okay sorry this uh, individual firm by the way okay so an individual firm faces perfectly elastic demand okay individual firms okay individual firm by the way so this individual uh, firm faces perfectly elastic demand so this individual firm how this uh, it can have a perfectly elastic demand this perfectly elastic demand is a situation in which a slight change in the price can affect the entire demand level okay if the price increases demand decreases okay if the price decreases demand increases okay to a large extent okay that is your perfectly elastic demand and the firm is output adjuster okay so yeah uh, in context to this uh, perfectly elastic demand i must uh, say that uh, this elastic demand sorry um, by this elastic demand we does not imply that the firm can sell an infinite amount uh, at this given price okay by the way remember that it cannot do so it only means that the uh, slight variation in production should be feasible okay there can be a slight variation and it should be feasible like it can be manageable you say okay in terms of the management you can say like that so there should be a feasibility okay that should be like economic also it should be adjustable it can be uh like manageable okay so that the price does not get affected okay and uh, in order to uh, sell more and more uh, a firm must not reduce the price it must not reduce the, uh, reduce the price firm has to stick to this particular price level okay stick to this particular price level okay so if the price decreases what happens is that the uh, magnitude of the demand will increase okay the demand will be affected however but it should stick to the equilibrium price only okay and again by this point this perfectly elastic it does not mean that it can sell anything in the market okay over that particular market price so you can see out here in this particular uh, graph that this is your market price okay this point e where point sorry where uh, d and s they are intersecting at a point okay so this is your equilibrium price okay please don't uh, get confused with this uh, industry and the firm okay please don't get confused with this industry and the firm okay yeah 
the firm is output adjuster now what is output adjuster it means that it can adjust the output as i've already said out here that uh, it can uh, make the variation in the uh, production okay that output it can be you know slightly manageable okay so that the price it doesn't get affected okay now uh, this uh, firm okay being an output adjuster must uh, make the decision regarding the level of output okay that it should produce so as to maximize the profit so now having a now having a look at this particular uh, graph let's have a look at this particular graph you can see so this is your demand curve okay dd is a demand curve and ss is a supply curve so looking at this point this dd situation a firm must supply this amount of good that is oq because oq is demanded in the market okay hence a firm must supply oq quantity of goods okay that is the output but if there is a situation out here like say this particular line is out here lying out here okay then it is uh, again intersecting at this point okay so then there will be a change in the demand curve i mean this, there will be a shift in the demand okay so this is how it will be uh, affected so whenever the uh, supply curve and the demand curve they intersect at a point at that point a firm will uh, be having a particular price level so at that price level only a firm must sell its products okay now in uh, order to determine the profit maximizing output the firm must meet two types of equilibrium conditions remember that two types of equilibrium conditions okay so what are these conditions the conditions are number 1 smc equals to mr and the second point is average revenue should be more than sac so what what is this uh, smc sac by s we actually referring to the short run okay and if you write l out here then it will be the long run okay so s out here is the short run so short run marginal cost uh, short run average cost okay so sac stands for short run average cost and smc stands for short run marginal cost okay so the two different uh, equilibrium conditions are number 1 short run marginal cost should equals to marginal revenue okay and the second condition is average revenue must be more than short run average cost or average revenue should be less than short run average cost or average revenue can be equals to short run average cost okay so uh, let us uh, see now let us discuss about this uh, first point okay which is from the 10th chapter that is the equilibrium of the of the firm okay now let us see out here so let us try to understand what is this condition by the way which i didn't explained properly in chapter number 10 okay so uh, you can see out here that in this particular graph okay this graph is not similar to the graph that i have used in the the previous uh, chapter that is number the chapter number 10 because i wanted to show you this also average cost okay because this uh, uh, smc and sac they are equal i mean they are related to each other okay so s is missing out here i'm sorry i should have uh, written that by the way anyway so this is your smc and this is your ac okay so you can see out here that in such a context u shaped sac implies that smc will eventually start to rise with increase in output so you can see out here that with increase in the output so up to this point you know you can see out here 
uh, see from this point okay your um, average cost is now reducing so now it will reach a particular point it will remain constant why it will be because of the increasing returns we know that part isn't it and now after this point average cost will start increasing with increase in output why it happens so because of the decreasing returns so previously your acc uh, curve okay short run average cost is decreasing i mean sac is decreasing okay the curve is decreasing because of the increasing returns okay as the number of output increases but after uh, reaching a certain point uh, acc curves starts to increase why it happens so because of the decreasing returns okay and we know this from the previous chapter that is chapter number 8 cost uh, sorry uh, concept of uh, cost and revenue isn't it now this average cost is closely related to marginal cost isn't it so i don't want to discuss about that in great detail now because we have to discuss other things out here so in relation to the average cost your mc curve previously it will be more okay so uh, up to this point okay below this point so here you can say that mc is less than ac okay so up to this point but after this point smc will be more than the acc that is marginal cost will be more than the average cost after this particular point why it happens because so of the increasing returns remember so now as you can see out here because the ac curve is a u-shaped curve hence mc curve will also be a u-shaped curve and you can see out here that mc curve is intersecting this line or the curve of ar or mr or you can say p okay and this p is also equal to d in the perfect competition market okay so we have already discussed this in the previous chapter that is cost and revenue analysis uh, i mean the revenue concept we have already uh, discussed this okay so the smc curve now cuts mr curve from below now this smc curve as you can see in this particular picture that mr curve is being intersected from below okay it, it is cutting from below so the profit maximizing level of output now what should be the prof, uh, uh, this profit maximizing level of output now what is the profit maximizing level of output so the profit maximizing level of output should be where smc this point number b okay is equals to mr at this point point b is q oh sorry it should uh, it should have been oq sorry oq okay so oq is the level of output that it should produce okay let us say that uh, this uh, q the q star is a point out here lying out here okay you can say like that you can you can give a particular number also so this q star okay you can have a number like 100 200 300 400 500 600 let us say it uh, q star it signifies 600 so it must produce 600 unit of output so it can maximize the profit because at this point it is reaching i mean it is satisfying this uh, first condition smc is equals to mr so where smc is equals to mr so at this particular point it must produce this level of output that is o q star okay now uh, we all know that smc is equals to mr okay from this particular uh, graph only we can say that smc is equals to mr okay and we know that mr is also equals to p so ultimately we can say that smc is equals to p in case of perfect competition market in the short run so now smc it implies that a firm must sell its product at cost of production so a firm must sell its product at the cost of production which means that in a perfect competition market there only exists one particular uh, price and that price is the cost price so in a perfect competition market cost price 
is the selling price of the product by the way so this uh, perfect competition market is a very interesting uh, topic by the way okay but remember that it is only a hypothetical situation okay it's not a myth by the way but it is a hypothetical situation okay now let us uh, have a look at this second situation second graph out here so that we can relate with the uh, topic of market mechanism which we have learned in class 11 by the way i hope you remember that part uh, okay so we can see out here closely that smc is equals to p okay and this p it implies the cost of uh, production okay and at this situation in the perfect competition market that p is equals to d so what is this d by the way so, so this d is equals to the demand and uh, this is given in the book only i don't know which page number uh, it's given in the book by the way okay please refer to your book also that you can see that uh, uh, this smc is equals to p and uh, p is equals to mr okay and at this situation this in a perfect competition market we all know that this p is equals to d that is the smc is equals to d you can say like that so here you can see that this is your level of output okay so this graph will tell you what is actually demanded so dd is the demand curve okay so this much of goods uh, is demanded by the public that is oq is demanded by the public and a firm must supply oq number of goods that is oq output output oq so that this d and s they are intersecting at a point e so this price prevailing must be equal to this average revenue or the marginal revenue of the firm so this is this situation now let me explain about this what is why this industry or the firm is written by the way this is actually signifying the entire market okay and this uh, particular graph is only for the firm okay so what is happening in the market okay what type of demand is being demanded in the market and what amount of goods it uh, should supply in the market that is the point equilibrium and this price prevailing which is through the market mechanism is the price that prevails in the market and it must equate with average revenue and the marginal revenue okay i hope you uh, you have understood this point uh, because uh, i cannot use uh, this uh, stupid kind of uh, uh, examples which i used to give uh, before okay extreme level of uh, examples because now this is the conclusion okay this is the concluding chapter of uh, microeconomics and this is completely scientific okay and uh, no i will discuss this uh, point in the next video okay so this is completely scientific okay and we cannot even for a second okay we cannot go out of the topic we must stick to the topic hence i am just uh, like i have pre uh, prepared this uh, ppt uh, in context to the uh, book okay so that you can just be in the book and uh, yes there are things which you must uh, learn okay and i urge you to read the book thoroughly okay and please ask me questions you will not understand at once before read it the topic then you will understand and if there is any kind of question i'm always there okay discuss with me okay ask me questions okay so we will discuss about this the second condition in the next video okay so i hope you have understood this first uh, uh, condition where smc that is the short run marginal cost is equal to the mr okay this mc okay i mean the concept of mc we have already discussed in the chapter number 8 and mr also chapter number 8 and this uh, thing class 11 okay so now everything is now coming under one roof okay now every 
topic is now reaching to one point only okay so this is the concluding chapter of microeconomics so when you reach this chapter okay if you have reached this chapter it must mean that whatever the previous topics were there whatever the previous things were there or the theory it must be assumed that you have the proper idea or the proper knowledge of the previous chapters then only you can understand this topic okay we will continue from lecture video 2